Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of Gifted Monkey TV, all things toy and toy related. You know me, I'm your host, Jordan Preston. And when we come back, what can I say? There's nothing else to say but two words. The Batman. All right, boys and girls, and as we promised, here we are with the box of the Hot Toys, The Batman, from the Batman movie. This is the deluxe version of the action figure right here. And what a great box. See a nice picture of Robert Pattinson there. A nice silhouette of him as the Batman. A little embossed the Batman insignia there. Here we got a nice little sleeve that goes on top of the box. Turn it to the side. Same thing. The Batman here. Sleeve continues around. Piece of the cape in the back. We have the Riddler symbol, the question mark, with a whole lot of indicia of the fine people from Hot Toys that made this. This is great. Freeze that if you want to look at that. On this side, again, same. The Batman, Batman. That. On the top of the box, the Batman. And on the bottom, a bigger, the Batman. Ha ah, ah, ha, nice box, nice packaging for this deluxe. All right, let's pop it open and see what we got going on. And with Batman fresh out of the box, we see some nifty stuff already in here. Kind of hard to see with the clamshell on top, but we'll take care of that in a moment. And we also got some stuff here that's on the bottom of the box, as you can see. And we'll get into all that stuff. How about right now? And man, does this The Batman figure, the deluxe, come with a whole lot of stuff. Look at this. Let's go through it. Comes with a grapple for the grappling gun, a long extended version. Comes with a smaller version, half out. Comes with two flares, one already half pulled out, one already in. Comes with hands. Quick thing on these hands. If you notice on the hand, there's a little silver tip on two top fingers. That's because in the movie, if you remember when he was fighting those guys after they got off of the train at the train station, one of them he got close with and he looked like he tased them, almost electrocuted him slightly. Uh, those fingers with the silver tips are what ran the current from his battery within his bat suit. He had it on his fingers and that's where they even got that. Talk about attention to detail. So those two silver tips are the current points where he touches someone and he can actually tase them strongly, put them out of commission. I think that's great. So back on. Hands, two fists, holding hands, grappling gun hands, two grappling guns that can go attached right onto his gauntlets, sticky gun, sticky gun cartridge, little grenade launch, the eye, transference you can move the eyes with this thing and take off the bat symbol on his chest handcuffs riddler's calling card to batman uh two batarangs this doesn't move this is fixed they're metal they're both die cast metal this stays in that position it doesn't open any further or close one open outstretched batarang metal two pegs if you need them and let's move on head sculpt Hair sculpt. You can change his hair into that hair for a more tousled look after he just pulls off his cowl. Two face plates, a cowl neck adjuster for when you change him into this. The cowl goes right around there. And a cowl that he can hold. He gets a cape for the motorcycle. This has more wiring in it. He gets that jumpsuit when he jumps off of the roof and he fails and he falls on the bus. That's that suit up there. He gets a great stand right here. Just a regular stand, it says the Batman on it. 
place to put the crotch grabbers or crotch grabber stand. But he gets these great two face coverings for that stand. Look at that. One says the Batman is in red. It's kind of raised, too, a little embossed. That's great with the bat signal on it. Let's raise that up a little bit so you can see. The Batman. And then he gets one with that explosion, like when he uh, tried to knock out Penguin's car. Then he gets these other great stands here. I, but you can also attach the crotch grabber in, which I did. And it also connects to this if you want to extend it and make it even bigger. He gets this great backdrop. It's got a little vinyl backdrop on it. And it actually moves a little bit as you turn the, uh, if you can see that, it picks it up. As you turn it, it moves actually a fraction here and there. But it's got a vinyl top on it. Very nice covering sheen. And of course, a booklet. This is great. Now, there's a lot of videos out there. By the time I got mine, I got my deluxe Batman set super late. So there's like a ton, a ton on YouTube of how-tos. This is how you put this on. This is how you take this off. This is how you move this around. So I'm going to be very quick on some of the stuff. And some of the stuff I might not even get to. But you can also reference it on many of the YouTubes. Justin, Jetta Patrol, many other guys. One Six Scale. There's a lot of people out there that have in detail. This is how you put this on. This is how you take this off. And be careful not to do this. So let's just go through it real quick, okay? And let's take a look at our The Batman. And there he is. Robert Pattinson as The Batman from The Batman Movie. Hot Toys really went above and beyond on this head sculpt. It looks really great. This is the whole body. I took the liberty of putting everything on him before I put him on the turntable here. He's already got the adrenaline shots in his packets. He's got the sticky bomb gun in there. He's got the flares in the back here already put inside his pouches. So that's his belt done. I'm thinking this part right here holds his handcuffs. I'm not sure because the handcuffs look kind of goofy when I fold them and put them on there. These handcuffs right here, they fold and they open too. But they look kind of goofy when I hang them on like too much. So I'm not sure yet. I got to do some research and see what was in that spot. But it looked like handcuffs would go there. Boots. Now the boots are cut at the at the cat. Uh, Boots are cut at the ankles, so they'll be able to put him in anything. As you see, he stands alone. You can move him in any way and stand him up by himself if you want. There's the hands. These are the two default hands that come on him already, besides the ones I showed you earlier. And there again, you see those metal sprockets right there that stick out on his top two fingers. That's the taser fingers, man, and he has them on both hands. That's really great attention to detail. This bat signal also comes out. It's detached by a magnet. You just pull it out with the, the thing that you use to change the eyes. Set it in the middle and pull it out. Comes out, goes right back in. I don't know what you would use it for because it's curved around to the shape of his chest, which has a curve to it. So it's kind of bent around that way in that form. The other two batarangs are straight. Uh, so this wouldn't work good as a batarang, but you might want to put it in your diorama as he's working on it, repairing it, just putting it into his chest, whatever you'd like to do with that. Uh, and it sticks right back in, magnetized. The gauntlets are great. They look fully metal. These look fully metal, but I think they're just plastic sculpted in, but they look pretty metal. They are not removable. They are not removable. The nice little gauntlet straps on his arms look so cool that just the straps pull tight, which resemble gauntlets that we've seen on other Batman in movies. That's very ingenious by the designers of this costume. Functional and cool. The gray of this might be a tad lighter than the movie. I'm not 
remembering correctly. It might be a tad lighter than in a movie, but you got to remember, uh, Hot Toys and other people that do action figures, they get production sheets of what the costume will look like or what the figure will look like, the, the character will look like. And sometimes the colors are a little off than what they actually use in the movie because in the movies, once they start shooting, principal photography and shooting, sometimes they go, oh, it's too light, it's not reading well, it's not great, we need to change the color a tad bit, and they darken it or lighten it. And so this might be a little bit lighter on the production sheets that they got at Hot Toys than it actually appeared in the actual movie. But it still looks great. I love it. We turn them around on my handy spindle here. Now he comes with two capes. This is the default cape that comes on him already in the box. It's a nice thin material. A layer. If you look on YouTube, this cape is getting a lot of hate. A lot of people do not like it because they say it's too thin. It is like a cray paper, very thin, but it's nice. It's got wires subtly in certain parts of it, so you can move it a little bit and pose it, which is great. But it looks nice, and it drapes well from the neck, which is the most important thing when you have a Batman is that, and Superman is that drape from the neck down from the cape, and this does that very well. We raise it up. We see the stitching. I think in the lore of this Batman, this is like a, a jumpsuit that he got, like a utilitarian, uh, other country, military fly suit that they would wear when they do drops and stuff like that. And uh, he got this and he just made it into a bat suit, which is great. The stitching is awesome on the sides. Zippers, two zippers in the middle. See the belt? Little spandex feel on the leggings, on the inner leggings. Looks great. Like I said, I'm not gonna spend super amount of time on this. I just wanted to give you my overview of this Batman for those who want to hear my opinion of him. He really looks fantastic though. He really looks fantastic. Let's take a look at some of those little special things he comes with. Now the Batman's head is on a magnetized neck base, which is really fantastic because you can move it actually 360 very easily. Now my magnet feels a little loose. Like if I shake his body a lot, real harsh, his head will come, will come off. That's how uh, loose the magnet is on there. But it's not any trouble as you can see, but it makes for a nice look up all the way, a nice look down, sideways tilt, Sideways tilt, he's very good. But you just pop it off like that and you see the face sculpts change. You just pull it out, the face comes from under the mask, like that, just pull it out, put another one in. Go back under the mask and just pop it in like that. These guys are also slightly magnetized there's a slight mouth open one. Then you have, pull it out. Then you have the grimace. It's great they give you this all these face changes because if he's in action pose, if you want to have him swinging, jumping, fighting, this is a great mouth plate for that. So sometimes they don't include that type of mouth plate for fighting and moving and having a little bit of trouble doing something in action poses, mouth plate, and that is great. My favorite of these three mouth plates is of course the neutral one. That's the one I'll be using and I'll put that back on. Once again, you just slide it right down with your thumb, comes right out, put it right back under there, under the mask, slide it right back in, and Bob's your uncle, there we go. It is in. It is in. To me, the full mouth closed 
looks the most menacing and the most like Robert Pattinson. What do you guys think? I think so. Let's change that head. Okay, to change into a civilian Robert Pattinson's head, you just take this off, it's on a Velcro clip. Nice and snug, there's the Velcro. Take that off, take the head off. Take this cape off, which is also on a Velcro clip. Up and over. Take this off, take that neck off. Collar on. Now the Robert Pattinson head sculpt is supposed to be without the cape. So that's the, the whole deal. They say in the instructions, it's without the cape. So I'm gonna take two seconds and put this on. Gotta take it off the camera because I have to use two hands on this. And there it is. Bob's your uncle, as I said earlier. <laughs> So there we go. That's the Robinson, Robin Pattinson head sculpt. Let's take a close look at that. Nice, nice. And you can change from that, you change the hair piece. The hair, top of the hair, front of the hair comes off. It's on a magnet. If you wanna change the eyes, you take the back of the head sculpt off. And there's the magnet. And you use your tool that I showed you earlier, just to adjust the eyes. So let's put that back on, the back of the hair. And then we'll change it to a wild front of the hair. There we go. This is one of my favorite looks for him because he looked like this during a lot of parts of the movie when he would take off his mask. Even when he didn't have the mask on, he would look like this. I like it, there we go. And you can make him holding his mask It could in a perfect world. There we go. Like that. And he looks totally emu as he did in the movie. Now, the just a little clue to you. The actual heads don't move as freely because they're not on a magnet. His neck is pressed, pressed all the way down into his body here. So the magnets don't move as, they don't move as clean as the magnets. The magnets move his head all over the place on the Batman head sculpt. But this is kind of harder to lean up and down. So you get him in a fixed pose and you kind of keep him in that pose that you like. But you don't get a full range of deep motion on that neck. Also, which is kind of funny, this part, this part of the neck of the cowl is th this part. So in real life, this should not be here. If he was gonna be holding his cowl in his hand and he'd be taking his mask off holding his cowl, this would still be on his neck like it is, but this would be vacant because it's on his neck. So there'd be a big gap right here. And he would just pull that over his head and then this would fill that in. But that's a little trivia piece for you guys. See, you can't, be, can't have two of those. But no one would live, really know that. They come into your place and look at your collection. They would just see the cowl and think it's a cool, oops. They would just think it's a cool thing to have on. No, one, no one's going to uh, judge you on that too much. So. There you go. Let's take a full 360 on that and see what that looks like.
Once again, Hot Toys recommends that you don't use a cape on this particular head sculpt when you use the, the uh, civilian head sculpt. I don't have that in all the way, so. But when you have it in correctly, which I do not have it in correctly, when you have it in correctly, you don't see that line seam at all. Very cool. The Riddler card is awesome. It looks exactly like the card that was authentic to the card that was in the movie. Open it. It says the same riddle. It's nice. To the Batman. The envelope. Very nice prop. The attention to detail from Hot Toys is really awesome on this deluxe package. The Batman figure gives you a nice range of motion as we spoke earlier. The magnetic base on that head is nice. It gives you 360 and deep bends because you can swivel all around that circle up there on the top of his head. So you can swivel all around, go low, go high. Works great on that flight suit because you can make it like he's really flying off a rooftop. That's great. If he fucks with these uh, arm, the shoulder guards, you can make his arms go up full rent band, bend of motion but because he has gauntlets and all these things on him you're not going to get the full range that's actually on the buck figure because of the suit being padded because of him being padded and because of these armor armored pieces all around him which are plastic by the way you're not going to be able to get full range of motion of what it could go the waist again because of the fat suit underneath him doesn't bend that much on the waist but you can get some swivel leg up to here, up to here. It's on a separate hinge right here on the foot is separate than the top of the calf. The boot is cut as well. I gotta tell you guys, if you have a Deadpool figure from Sideshow or even Hot Toys, you know about these type of belts that Every time you move the waist or the arm or you move them some way, these things pop right off because they're only hanging on his belt. So these things, you got to be very careful not to lose them. And uh, you can even glue them down if you want a slight bit of super glue, crazy glue. Just glue them down, keep them in place. But uh, they pop right off as soon as you bend the ankle, move it around, take it off. In fact, that's why Sideshow, Sideshow, that's why Hot Toys recommends you take these off before you try to sit them on his bike so that you don't lose them because they have to come off so you can get a full range of bend in here. Hands, get a nice bend. So as I said before, the only reason I'm rushing through this, I just want to give you an overview of this Batman figure. There's so many reviews of this guy because I'm late to the party with this guy that you can find some deep, in-depth things. But if you want to hear my thoughts on it, that's what we're doing today. Nice. And just a little added something I thought you guys might enjoy. This is the Bat Cycle. Now, this isn't the over $300, $350 Bat Cycle from Hot Toys. This Bat Cycle actually cost me about $17 at a Target. It's from a company called Spin Master. And Spin Master is like a gateway drug for collectors if you're a kid, because they make authentic looking toys for kids. But they're this really, you know, this is a cheaper plastic, of course, and everything, and it's not painted. I'm working on this right now. So the paint detail you see on this is what I'm doing right now. It doesn't come this detailed in the paint yet. But uh, Spin Master makes uh, action figures for kids based on movie properties for DC, Batman, Superman, Justice League, things like that. But this is the Bat Cycle that I'm using because I didn't want to spend $350 plus on my Bat Cycle. So this is, I'm working on modifying this right now to be my Bat Cycle because I'm only going to use this Bat Cycle as a prop. So I'm not going to use it as a detail. He's riding it, so you really have to see it. It's going to be next to him some way, and it's going to be as a prop. So that works perfect 
perfectly for me not to spend that. And with a little modification, paints and futzing, you can have it look pretty damn good like I'm doing right now. I'm painting it, futzing, uh, messing around with it because it doesn't come like this, putting the paints the applications on right now. So I just thought you guys would have a good time with that. Wow, that bat cycle really looks good with him. Don't you guys think? Look at that. And I haven't finished touching it up yet. And for those of you wondering if that Spin Master's Bat Cycle is in scale with a 1-6 Batman, yes, he is. There he is right there with it. 1-6 scale Spin Master Bat Cycle with the 1-6 scale The Batman. This is a, about $16, $17 Bat Cycle I got from Target that I'm modifying to look even better, detailing, with a over $350 figure. And if you were a novice coming into my collection room, you wouldn't know the difference. You would say, wow, look at the Bat Cycle and the Batman. That's awesome. And like I said, he'll be displayed something like this. So he's not going to be riding it or the Bat Cycle's not going to be prominent. If I was going to do that, maybe I would spring for a $350 Bat Cycle. But since he's, the Bat Cycle's just going to be like uh, any other part of a diorama, like a staircase, it's going to be incidental and just a nice little addition to my diorama, like this or so, it doesn't matter. It looks great the way it is. And as you can see, Pattinson looks great with that. It is in scale. So let that be a tip to you guys. Look for that Spin Master Bat Cycle. Now you're gonna have to trick it out and do some uh, paint apps on it. And those of you who paint well and stuff, not a problem for you. And just make it look like a, the, the bat cycle for, re use the real bat cycle for reference photos. And you can have a nice looking bat cycle in your diorama for cheap. Nice. And one last thing about my cheapy bat cycle from Spin Master. This is a photo of the actual Hot Toys Bat Cycle. The 300, over $350 Hot Toys Bat Cycle. And a lot of YouTube uh, people are complaining about it for their purchase because for some reason, Hot Toys put the footrest right here over the exhaust. And it's so close that when Batman sits on the Bat Cycle, it doesn't sit right because the foot pedal's too close to where he would sit. And for some reason, Spin Master, put it right on mine. They put it correct on, on theirs. They put it back here instead of right here. So once again, let's take a look. There's Hot Toys foot pedal in relation to the exhaust. Here's Spin Master's foot rest in relationship to the exhaust. See the difference? Big difference, and this is correct. This is where this should have been back here. And this is where this should have been right here. It's correct. So when Batman's foot rests, he can actually lay down on the bike correctly like you saw in the movie. $16, $350 plus. Amazing, right? Wow. Guess I lucked out. Well, there you go. Today we took a quick look, a quick review of the Robert Pattinson, The Batman action figure by Hot Toys from the movie, The Batman. Man, to me, this figure is awesome. I think it's one of the best figures that Hot Toys has done in a long time. Definitely one of, for figure of the year of 2024.
Mm -hmm. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys going to get this Batman from Hot Toys? Or are you going to get the one from Inner with the rooted Bruce Wayne hair? Uh, I think about it, but you know what? How many times am I going to use the rooted Bruce Wayne hair? Not a lot. I was always going to have them with the Batman cowl on for my collection. But speaking of which, you can get this Batman in three ways at Hot Toys. You can get him in a standard, which is just the, the Batman and maybe a few other accessories. Or you can get him with the Deluxe, which is the one we looked at today, which comes with all those nifty stands and the face swaps and the head sculpts of Barbara Pattinson. Or you can get the one that comes with all that plus the Bat Signal, which is a little more expensive. Which one would you get? Which one do you have? Write down below and let me know. This guy is just all types of awesome. The only thing, only nitpick I have with this is that because of the fat suit underneath and the material, you don't get full range of motion in the waist or the arms or the knees. So he doesn't have super, super poseability, but when you can get him in a pose, if you futz with the material enough, you can get him in a nice deep pose, he looks fantastic. And you can't beat that head sculpt. No one can, that is awesome. I tell you. So what are you going to do? Oh, before I forget, you can also get that Bat Cycle from Hot Toys. Three fifty dollars is going to run you. What did you think about that, about that Spin Masters Bat Cycle I had just now in the video? $16, $17. Bucks. And it came with three figures. The Penguin, Catwoman, and the Batman. One six scale. Spin Masters on sale at Target a few months ago for like 16, 17 bucks. You can probably still find it at Walmart or Target or online at those places. But as I'm modifying it, as you see, it's going to look great, I think, in a nice simple diorama with this Batman. What do you guys think? Did you like that Spin Masters Bat Cycle? <laughs> I thought it was kind of cool. So let me know. And at the end of this video, there'll be some photos. We'll have a little photo op of this Batman in some poses. Thank you guys for joining us today. And as always, please, if you like what we did today, subscribe and hit that thumbs up button because you guys help us so much and we are growing. And thank you, it's because of you guys and I thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. And remember, collecting toys, even the one six scale Robert Pattinson, the Batman from the movie, The Batman by Hot Toys can be in front of the barrel of monkeys. But respect the monkey. Play nice. Bye, guys.